uh, UNEP, United Nations Environment Program, uh, is one of the implementing agencies of the Montreal Protocol. And we try to help the developing countries or Article 5 countries to comply with their phase out obligations under the protocol. And in this uh, sense, we're working with many different stakeholders, with customs officers, with refrigeration experts, with policy makers. And that is the reason why we are also attending these kind of congresses. Now, coming to my presentation, I uh, just want to give you a short outline. Uh, I have a few slides on the Montreal Protocol and on refrigerant management. Then, specifically, I will highlight some of our initiatives, especially in my region. I'm coordinating the network in Europe and Central Asia. And then focusing a bit on our cooperation with international stakeholders and with the SMITES and KGA Association in particular. But let me start with a few slides uh, on the Montreal Protocol. Uh, this slide should just highlight that the recovery of ozone layer is really a long-term objective. Uh, currently, there's still a huge uh, ozone hole, which means a very low concentration of uh, ozone in the atmosphere. And um, expected recovery of ozone layer might be in the second half of the century. So the problem is far from being solved. Um, why we are actually implementing the Montreal Protocol. This is not to impose any legislation on countries or restriction on companies, but it's actually to protect human health. It's actually survival of human beings on Earth. Uh, there have been some studies what would have been the case without the Montreal Protocol, which means without phasing out the chlorofluorocarbons or hydrofluorocarbons and other ozone depleting substances. And uh, in the US EPA, they estimate that by the year 2100, many million of cases of avoided eye cataracts um, through the Montreal Protocol. Similar also, without the Montreal Protocol, by the year 2100, it would have been a 300% increase in skin cancer. And also not to neglect the contribution of the protocol to climate protection, because most of the refrigerants which have been phased out or being, are being phased out have a very high global warming potential, and thus the, the protocol contributed a lot to climate protection. Uh, you're all aware of the phase-out schedule for HCFCs in uh, developing countries, or so-called Article 5 countries. We are now in the year 2015, where actually the first obligations apply 10% reduction. And as it was mentioned by, by previous speakers, uh, there will be a gradual reduction until the year 2030, when basically HCFCs will not be allowed anymore in any country in the world. You're certainly also aware of um, the phase-out schedule for developed countries, um, which is even 10 years advanced. That means in developed countries, the phase-out will take place in um, 2020, sorry, 2030, no, so 20, I might have made a mistake here. Um, uh, actually, they already have reduced their consumption by 90%, and the European Union even went uh, had a very uh, more uh, challenging um, uh, schedule. They faced out the use of HCFCs already in the year 2010, five years ago. And of course, everybody is aware that Serbia is a candidate country and might in the future comply with the European Union regulations. Maybe a few words on the HFCs. Uh, I will not go to detail of the FGAS regulation in the European Union. But there have been some recent developments under the Montreal Protocol. Two, three weeks ago, there was a meeting of the parties in Dubai, and it was for the first time that the parties agreed on what they call the Dubai Pathway, which means to create a formal working group and to work together to amend the Montreal Protocol in the year 2016 to include the control of HFC under the Montreal Protocol. And uh, we will see also whether this is endorsed by the climate conference currently going on in Paris. Some, some activities are also going on in the developing countries, for example, surveys on alternative refrigerants, 
which means an inventory of actually the alternatives which are available, alternatives to HCFCs, and that includes the HFCs, natural refrigerants, and so on. And currently, these surveys are approved for all developing countries, nearly all of them, and they're currently doing the data collection to complete them within 2016. Um, I will not go to the detail of the FGAS regulation. You're aware of the MAC directive and the new FGAS regulation, but it is important to know, of course, that um, uh, there are provisions for certification of personnel, for labeling of equipment and logbooks, and for uh, avoiding leakage. And of course, the schedule, the phase down schedule, not a phase out schedule, but a phase down schedule for HFCs in the European market. And the, the aim in the European market is to reduce gradually until year, the year 2030 by 79% um, of the HFCs, but not measured in terms of substance, but in terms of the, the carbon dioxide equivalent of the refrigerants. So that's, of course, a very important issue. Now, let us uh, come to the type of cooperation we, we maintain with uh, a lot of uh, different stakeholders. We actually started to, to invite uh, refrigeration experts to our annual network meetings and thematic meetings back in the year 2008. And uh, we have very good contacts uh, with many other organizations. We usually can send our participants from developing countries to attend their congresses without paying conference fees and we get contributions to our publications. Then one year later, in 2009, we started also to invite representatives of refrigeration associations. Um, the other participants are usually the representatives of the ministers, ministries, the, we call them ozone officers, which are the focal points of the Montreal Protocol. And um, not all countries actually had refrigeration associations in place. We also helped some countries to create associations, for example, Croatia, Macedonia, and Bosnia-Herzegovina. And some of these associa associations have, for example, become certifi certifying bodies now under the uh, FGAS uh, regulation in Croatia, for example. And we also organized um, thematic meetings uh, specifically on certification of personnel and companies, for example, in 2011 in Budapest, where we had invited experts from STEC in Netherlands, from Germany, from France, and uh, of course from Hungary. We, we try to, to provide access to technology because there's often a problem that uh, the experts in the developing countries don't have access to technology. Not every country has an annual conference like you here in, in Belgrade. There are language barriers. Uh, so we try to reach out technology information. We try to translate some of the inf information into Russian. Russian and English are the languages of our network. And we have created a website, the so-called ECA Cool website, uh, which is in English and Russian, and where we try to disseminate technical videos, information, guidelines, and so on. We focus also a bit on the training of experts in the developing countries. For example, we have sent some selected trainers to specialist training to this GIZ training in Maintal. There is a Bundesfachschule for Kälte Klimatechnik in, uh, in Maintal, specifically to be trained on a safe use of flammable, toxic, and high pressure refrigerants, because this seems to be a barrier to introduce um, new technologies in the countries. And we work with some providers of e learning programs, uh, for example, Star Refrigeration to adapt some of the existing training on containment, uh, basically preparation for the certificate under the FGAS regulation, to produce language versions also in Russian, and more recently also in cooperation with uh, SMITE's uh, Serbian version, uh, which is now available, and uh, interested uh, technicians uh, can buy this course from uh, SMITE's KGH and do this course in Serbian and can get a certificate. It's not the FCAS certificate, but it's preparing for the assessment if somebody wants to do the FCAS assessment. Then uh, we certainly have a very close cooperation also with ASHRAE. 
Uh, there is a joint work, pro work program with a lot of detailed activities, uh, working together with the ASHRAE chapters, and the ASHRAE is willing to also help establishing associations and societies in our region and in all other regions. And um, more recently, for example, there has been a conference um, for alternative refrigerants in high ambient temperatures in Dubai, which was co-organized by ASHRAE, UNEP, and many other uh, organizers and sponsors. And there are websites, of course, available with all the presentations and meeting documents. We also have very close cooperation with AREA, the Air Conditioning Refrigeration Association, um, um, and the Centro Studi Galileo with Marco Boni. Uh, he, for example, uh, arranged with us uh, training uh, and certification under the Italian FGAS regulation. Um, they also help some countries to strengthen the refrigeration associations. So recently he went to, to Bosnia-Herzegovina, to, to, to Sarajevo, and helped the newly created association to, to get going, to actually understand how to recruit uh, memberships and how to, to collect membership fees and what kind of awareness products to produce and so on. Um, he also contributed to training on certification and we have joined publications and we also contributed and reviewed a project which is a Euro European Union funded project on real alternatives e-learning, which is available to, to everybody free of charge. I can recommend to do that training and I believe available in many European Union languages. Probably not Serbian, but it is available in English and many other languages, French and so on. Then suddenly we all cooperate with IIR, mainly on publications and outreach. I forgot to mention REFVA. We also had cooperation with REFVA, and uh, uh, we are sending some of our, our experts to REFVA conferences. Uh, the Climate and Clean Air Coalition uh, is also one of their work area is uh, HFCs. So they have many other, other work areas. And we produced a publication or case studies on low global warming potential alternatives last year. And they are funding some of the surveys on uh, the use of HFCs in developing countries. One of these countries in our region is Kyrgyzstan. And uh, also very recently in November, uh, we arranged a joint uh, food cold chain conference in Montreal, where also many other partners were involved in organizing that, including IIR and others. Then suddenly we have always uh, been interested in what Checo is doing. They are promoting a lot of natural refrigerants. We usually try to reach out this information to our refrigeration associations so they can further spread the information to their technicians. And also, as I mentioned, the training in uh, Germany on the safe use of uh, alternative refrigerants, cooperation with GIZ. GIZ is producing a lot of excellent documents, uh, code of good practices, and we are promoting the outreach, in some cases also translation into, into Russian. But now let me come to the cooperation with, uh, with the Serbian Association and SMITES. Uh, Basically, the organization is uh, participating in our network meeting since 2009. You can see here Professor Todorovic, who attended the meeting in Armenia, and uh, also uh, a Romanian association, Graciela Tarlea and Didier Colomb from IIR. Uh, so that was the first meeting where we had all the refrigeration associations involved in our, our network meetings. And uh, subsequently, um, SMITES uh, helped us with the organization of a technology roundtable in Belgrade in 2011, where we had about 100 participants uh, and many experts from private industry uh, explaining the technology options available and their products. And that was done in cooperation with the Serbian Ministry of Agriculture and Environmental Protection. We are jointly implementing their uh, HCFC phase-out strategy, and uh, this is basically a part of the awareness component of this project, uh, which is being implemented in Serbia. We also had uh, another meeting in Montenegro, and uh, SMILES arranged a site visit of this uh, solar, solar uh, plant 
uh, in Budva, the plant which was presented yesterday by, by Mr. Pekovic. Uh, and so they helped us a lot in, in arranging all these uh, site visits uh, during our thematic meeting in 2014, last year. And uh, I, I shortly mentioned already, it was a huge effort to produce the Serbian language version of the e-learning on, on containment and good practices, um, which is now available, commercial product, but I would say at a very, very preferential price. I think um, uh, Smites is selling this uh, uh, to non-members for 70 euro and to members for 50 euro. If you buy the English version from Star Refrigeration, you have to pay 300 euro. So it is uh, a good opportunity to, to I mean, uh, to build up your, your knowledge on that subject and to pass the actually EFCA's assessment of the European Union if you intend to do so. Um, certainly for, for many years, since 2011, we participate in this conference and we are very grateful for the support we are getting from the organizers to arrange the forum on ozone and climate friendly technologies which took place yesterday in the morning we have exhibition booths and we have regular articles in the quarterly uh, newsletter of uh, the kga and um, all this is done again part of the hcfc project with the serbian ministry of agriculture and environmental protection Maybe just the last slide on what we are planning to do next year. We hope to arrange our, our meeting with the refrigeration associations in parallel to the conference next year in December. So to allow them to attend part of the conference and, and the forum. And uh, that will be our continued cooperation with SMITES. I would like, just like to take this opportunity to thank SMITES and KGA very much for the excellent cooperation and support to us. Uh, and I would like to thank you for your attention.